So, I, you know, I have a, a bunch of kids. I have three kids, and I'm always looking for apps. But dig into the app store uh, for, your, for your iPad or your Android tablet is pretty difficult. It, it's hard to figure out what are the good five or six apps that you should be uh, putting on their iPads or on their tablets to teach them something. And uh, I'm going to talk to Apple Learning right now, which is coming out of Applelicious, about how they help us do just that. Who are you? Alan Wars. I'm the founder of Appalicious and we're the producer of Apple Learning. Uh, I've been involved in tech since I was probably 14 years old with my Apple II Plus uh, with a circuit board that I attached to it and wrote a little program to kind of control count to a million in binary, which is pretty exciting. Uh, <laughs> so I'm a double E undergrad, but I've been doing internet startups for a long time. I worked with uh, Mark Pincus at Freeloader and Sunil Paul was also, I worked with both those guys yep. and participate.com and now Appalicious where we talked when we launched in 2009. Very cool. And so why do we need this? I mean, uh, you know, the App Store, uh, the Apple App Store has a million apps, and I think the Android App Store is pretty close to that, if not uh, the same. Why do, why, don't, why, why do we need more sure. App Stores, particularly for uh, educators or parents who are trying to find apps? I think the real issue is that the App Stores have come a long way about helping somebody as a new device load up on a bunch of great apps. They really do a nice job on there. But anytime you get into any deep vertical area, they fail. They don't work well. And the reason they don't work well is when you're looking for that great educational app or that great small business app or that great wearable app, it's closer to looking for a book than it is for looking for a website. And the search metaphor doesn't work. So what you're looking to do is when you look for a mystery novel, you don't Google best mystery novel and go buy one. You go to Amazon, you do some reading, you look at some reviews in the New York Times book review, whatever you do. So what we've done is realize that in these deep vertical areas, it's failing. And we thought it was failing because you're not giving consumers three things they need to make a good decision about downloading an app. One is context. I don't really care about an education app. I want a seventh grade algebra app. Yeah. The second one is credibility. Who's ranking this app? I don't care about 200 anonymous raters. Yeah. Who, do they really know what the heck they're talking about? Especially when we get into things like you know, algebra or calculus or trigonometry. Um, and then finally, transparency. How are they ranking this app? And so we thought there was a better way to do it. Uh, and we created a solution on the back end where we create a custom rubric to score the apps. We've recruited experts, individual experts who already know the subject matter and know apps to select the five best apps out of all the apps. It's not out of a million apps. It's not even out of 50,000 educational apps. It's actually out of how many trigonometry apps are there for high school, right? Yeah. Um, and then we have them score these apps. We go out, we vet those scores, and, and there's a solution. We think it's a much, much... I mean, we're a five-star app on the App Store, so people like it. Right. There's there's other uh, app store, al alternate app stores yep. that do this stuff algorithmically, and they do somewhat of a decent job. But you guys are really focusing on pulling in uh, curated reviews, I That's guess right. is the way I would put it. Right? That's right. We think of ourselves as closer to like a wine spectator experience or even as a GOTS experience than a search listing. And again, it's getting making sure that you as a parent or you as a teacher or you as a student is, com is confident. Can we look at what the reviewer would see sure. and uh, sort of uh, sense uh, what you're asking them to fill out and, and, sure. and why your database is so interesting? So what we do is we, we, we go to a teacher and actually we ask them to come back and we, get, we assign them a category and we say, uh, pick out the five best apps for that category. For each of those apps, we actually have them go into the back end, fill out a report card, add a short description, answer why we love the app, what it teaches and how it works, why your kid won't be able to put it down, assign it and then they can add a couple of other content types. But the cool thing is with this rubric that we've created, we have them go through and answer a set of questions which really normalizes our reviews and they're pretty clear. So for example, an educational content has specific educational objectives and, and demonstrates sound knowledge of learning theory and of child development. And the teacher can give that a one, two or three score. Yeah. And there's very clear guidelines on how you give it a one, two or three. One is it's limited, two is it offers value but not always pertinent, three is it executes on a clearly defined educational objectives. And then they do that for kid appeal, assessment, features and design, value, safety and privacy.
the people you're hiring to do these reviews, uh, you're paying them, I would assume. We're right? paying. We are paying them. But and the great so they're thing they're vetted is, and, they, and they're who are these people? How do they're you they're teachers. So there's classroom teachers who are interested in technology. We found them. They found us. We interview them. We make sure they know their stuff. Uh, typically, it's a teacher who's been gone through tens, hundreds of apps, and the apps are trying to find that best app for their students. So they've done much of this work already. But then after they do that work, we then have another educational consultant and expert come in and vet the results. We also compare it to the App Store. So a great anecdote is there was a French app we recommended, which actually had a really bad rating in the App Store. But when we looked into it, we realized is the app was all in French. Well, French teachers love that. They want to have a complete immersive experience. But Joe, average consumer in the App Store, doesn't want to see something that's only in French. They want something in English. We left the app in there. So that's an example of how we're you know, really creating superior results. And so the key is that these folks know what they're doing. So they find those five best apps. Yeah. And how do you make money? Because I, that, I'm, I don't see any ads or anything like well, that. Well, so we do sell, you know, we do talk about sponsored listings, but ultimately what we're doing is we're, we're creating what we think is a really proprietary set of data around apps. This is all a ton of metadata that we own exclusively, and we're licensing that data to folks. Yeah. And you don't try to be comprehensive. You're just trying to pick five, you know, like, uh, well, let's see some of the apps. Sure. Uh, You've got three kids, Robert, so tell me an age group. Well, and a well I have a six-year-old who's autistic, so that I always look for uh, interesting apps that might appeal to him. Okay, so here we've got a category, elementary school, and we've got autism. So I click on autism, what we're saying is these are the five best apps for autism. And what you can see here is a write-up, and what this write-up first says is why were these apps selected? There's a lot of places where they list apps, like in the iTunes App Store, they may list apps, but you don't know why they were selected. Some of the apps don't even have a rating, which makes yeah. no sense. Here we say, this is why these five apps were selected. Here are the five apps, and I can say, well, this school writing app got a 96. Yeah. I click on it. There's screenshots and a video review, but you also get this really detailed score of how does this do against all the elements. And the cool thing is, you say, well, who is Jill Goodman who reviewed this app? Because that's the obvious question a parent has. Why do I trust this person? You click on Jill Goodman, and uh, we, we, her knowledge and experience with special needs apps is extensive. She's a mom to twin boys, one of whom has autism. Yeah. Right away, there's credibility. Oh, I can also click on her profile. Yeah. I can click on Twitter. I have a way to reach her. So we pull all those things together, and it's really all about giving you the credibility and the transparency around why these apps are selected. Let's see what it looks like on the iPad, just so people have a, sure. a, a visual sense of what the uh, iPad looks like. Sure. So this is the iPad app. Again, you've got a, an older, a six, how old is your oldest child? Uh, 19. 19, okay. And let's just say you're looking for a trigonometry app for him yeah. going to college, just to kind of back up. These are the best trigonometry apps. Same kind of thing. Ballpark it, Trigonometry, Trig Pro, Khan Academy. Same kind of thing here. Very quickly, where you can actually download the app directly from the app. Here's the, here's the detailed writing. We have information about how we score the apps. Yep. And again, I can look into the teacher who did it and say, well, gosh, this is a retired NASA software engineer who's certified in teaching math and actually has a company that integrates mobile apps into the math curriculum. Pretty that's credible, cool. right? Not cool. an anonymous guy. So that's yeah. the idea. That's cool. Um, what got you into, into this? Why, why did you pick this vertical and not, you know, something Well, we there? think we, the, re, the reason is really three reasons. One is personal. I had a seventh grader that she's now in eighth grade who was looking, starting algebra, and I was trying to find an app for her that would kind of give her ratios and reciprocals and just all that kind of uh, uh, basic testing and review, really hard to find. Two is Appalicious has a long history in the educational segment. A lot of teachers used us to create lists in 2009. Um, and thirdly, education punches above its weight. It's really important to tablet manufacturers and to carriers and to other folks as a way to reach moms and to add value and to help people drive purchase decisions. Now, since you're on both Android and uh, iPad, you're, you're mostly for tablet, right? Although you have a web version, but mostly for tablet. Uh, are you noticing trends, uh, different trends? Well, or? one of the interesting things that we saw, much to our surprise, is we launched this originally for the iPad. We just today launched this for the iPhone, Android phone, and Android tablet for 80 categories each. Yeah. We scored apps, the top five apps for each of those categories. And to our surprise, Android is almost at a dead heat with iOS. The conventional wisdom is iPad dominates, iPad dominates for education. But if you look at these scores, what you see here is Android tablet from elementary, middle school, and high school is almost at a dead heat. 
They're not as good for early childhood, not that surprising since Google's been focused on Google for, for kind of K through 12, through Google yeah. Play for Education. But what it really says is this isn't talking about the breadth of apps, but if you're looking to find five great apps, you're gonna find them on Android right now. Yeah. Which I think, I think that's something that wasn't the case even last year. No, and, the, and the quality is similar, and that sort of makes sense because uh, you know, the price on Android tablets is coming, coming down, and like my uh, sister-in-law teaches up in Oregon, and she's buying all Android tablets because her, her dollar, you know, Right. Thousand dollars buys five tablets, where a thousand dollars on iPads buys three. Right. That's right. So, uh, you know, she'll take five tablets so she can get more kids on uh, uh, with screen time. So, um, tell me a little bit about your company and how it developed this stuff. So we 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 really thought you know the the notion was we wanted to go back and say how can we create a better discovery experience and we heard from parents and teachers that they're looking for apps for their kids. So we focused on the back end here on Apple Learning, but we also then focused on another area which would allow teachers to create their own app lists or parents to create their own app lists. Yep. So the idea is, you know, if you've got a class on globalization, that's not a typical category. Yet using our tool, you can still store, score and, and curate those apps. And it's really all about trying to solve that problem of there's a million great apps, but how do you find which ones are right for you, which ones are gonna add value for you? And that's been a passion of ours since the founding of Appalicious. Very cool. Um, where do we learn more about your company? Go to appolearning.com, A-P-P-O learning.com. There's a link there. We're also in the uh, iTunes App Store for iPads only. Um, but appolearning.com has links to iPad, iPhone, Android phone, Android tablet, as well as user-generated picks. Very cool. Thanks so much for coming in and showing it to me. And thanks for what you're doing for my kids. <laughs> thanks, Robert. Appreciate it. Thanks.